Get yourself ready. Okay, so we are back after finishing our delicious lunch. I think it was nice. One thing I wanted to talk about, and we haven't run into this yet, is we've overeaten at every venue we've been to so far. And that's you partially in my fault. Yes, it's my it's fault. Because, you because have a, I like, have hollow legs. Or something. Right. And I have compelled a lot of us to order appetizers early. This was the first time we really just got into just the lunch uh, entree. Right. And just pick that, figure out what the thing is, and enjoy it. Yeah. And I really enjoyed my lunch today. The crab cakes were, they were almost melting your mouth. They were really that good. I want to thank and you for offering me a bite, by the way. That's something we should write into the script, <laughs> where uh, we share some food. Maybe we should share early, because... Well, I mean, I don't want, like, you know, a bite, like, well, you've already no, taken a bite. Like, cut me off a little... No, uh, when we do some ordering, full let's of, bring... Of the, no, let's have the server bring a serving spoon at every meal. Right. And then we can take our side plate, I'll get a little scoop of yours, you'll get a smaller scoop of mine, and then we'll be able to go and at least taste it. Yeah. And I'm sorry. That, that's you my fault. Be. I mean, like I, I would have like let you. Train, you could have tried right the stew, through. and you said, "Well, save me some." You had a little plate off to the side. You were going to try some, and I would have let you try. And I, I started so working vindic- on one side. I didn't work all the way around. No, I just started going no, for one I side. No, I saw you pop that last piece of beef in your mouth you just, with a sneer at me. You were like, "Look, because yes, you were like, psych, yes, because you had already eaten your whole sandwich, and I couldn't help myself. And there was two halves of the sandwich. They even they even halved it for you too. Well, it makes it easier to gobble. I said, nice. Very good. All right. So, so I was very satisfied with. I was very satisfied with mine. It was good. Uh, it was it true to form. It was very filling. It was great. Uh, let it cool a little bit, as you should always do with yep. any type that's like a pot pie type of deal. And uh, I didn't scald my tongue, which means I could talk now. Right. Well, the other, um, if I were eating alone, like maybe when you get a better looking co-host and okay. boot me off the show. Well, that's going to happen. If, it's in the works. If I were eating alone, I would have ordered Graydon's as my second lunch. Because that bangers and mash look really good. The sausages look great. The <laughs> potatoes and the onion rings right on top. I'm like, ah, maybe we can send Graydon out on an errand, and I can take care of that second plate. This is very nice. Now, the, the <laughs> challenge for me is a lot of these lunches that we have, you talk about getting full. Like, we've been eating appetizers. I never order appetizers at lunch, unless it's like a weekend lunch. Like, right. you're just hanging out. You know yeah. you're going to be there for three hours. Uh, but the other thing is, a lot of times I'm ordering things that are probably bigger than I normally would order. At lunch. Yeah. You know, like I'm, I'm usually a sandwich guy at lunch. You are a sandwich guy. I'm a sandwich guy. Oh, yep. well, I'm a burger guy. But So this is good. It's a good departure for me right. to experience something different. Well, it's odd for me, too, in the time that we eat. Because yeah, we're focused, later. focused not to screw up the restaurant. So we're eating around 2 in the afternoon, which I could be ravenous. I mean, maybe you've seen Could be. Me. I was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So you've seen me eat in the past, yeah. and I'm usually, this could be my fourth meal at two in, two in the afternoon, so. It is pretty impressive. Yeah. It is pretty But, yeah, the mean? food here was great. The uh, the fries wasn't, the fries weren't off the charts, no. but they were good. We uh, got some all vinegar, and they were perfect for that, so. Well, I think that when you go to Irish restaurants, I've noticed that usually the fries are very bland. Very, you know, they don't do any seasoning to them or something yeah. like that. They usually, you know, add the vinegar, and now you're you're on with it. Uh, the only thing, I, from a menu perspective, they do have fish and chips yeah. on the menu, but yeah. it wasn't on the lunch menu. I was very surprised it wasn't there, but, you know, of course, I saw the Irish stew. I just had to go with it. There are but some places we'll go for that. There the are fish some English chips, yeah. places on our list, okay. and uh, we'll I'm bring down. those up. Bring yeah. it up. Yeah. Yeah. So you want to kick it into uh, topic number two? Yeah, topic number two. Got me fired up on yeah, this. I'm you're... fired up. Like, I bring the, the, the just vitriol on every right. single topic that we have. So I live in a neighborhood. It's a cul-de-sac, so you know, just a bunch of houses around a circle, pretty much. Yep. And uh, two doors down from me is a neighbor who I'm sure, if he sees this, he's going to be all ticked off. But hey, maybe this will be a lesson to him. Right. Right. Is that I've got a son. I'm out there, you know, playing with balls. I was going to tell my daughter. <laughs> yes. This is a little side note here. Jeff thought my 10-month-old daughter was Her, a boy. His boyish-looking daughter. She has short hair. All babies have short hair. And Andrew Jim. Riley. Oh, Riley. It's Riley Ann. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't and I, know the When I tweet life. about her, I say my little girl, my little baby, you know, little baby girl. It's always a girl. I'm going to have to go there. back and my read little some princess or something. All right. So, <laughs> nice. So, anyway, <laughs> so I'm out there playing, you know, with my son, playing wiffle ball or what have you. And uh, he's friends with a little boy who's a couple of doors down. Now, the little boy is, is like three and a half or something. Right. But it's not uncommon for the parents of this little boy to let him be outside by himself. Now, do they just open the door and kick the kid out, or are they uh, well, out there, there for been, a little bit? There have been they, times. Yeah, there's been times where they're out they there and they kind of go back, back and help. Or they go in the backyard and he's out, out in the front all by himself. Okay. Or 
He's also been known to sneak out of the house. So I'll cut you some slack. But Does now, he have a cat door? How about something called locking the door? What right. a wacky concept Or a leash. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm outside playing with my son, and all of a sudden, the little three-and-a-half-year-old just appears. Yep. And he's out there. And now I'm a responsible adult and a parent. It's right. kind of wacky. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm stuck like, great. You know, Sometimes I want to go back in the house. like We're done playing, right. but I'm now going to be out so here. So now you're the de facto double parent. I'm You've like, got to watch this other it. kid. Yeah. Well, that's not right. Well, and then what works is like I, you know, the kids come down to the cul-de-sac because it's like the flattest place in all of our neighborhood. It's fa- fairly hilly where yeah. we live, but we live on the flat street. So you're so Uncle Mike. You're I'm in like, charge. Yeah, of, so you're I'm running like, a they, summer camp. They ride their much. bikes around and so forth. And then they'll seem to play you know, wiffle ball with Jackson, and they'll say, "Oh, well, we want to play too." And I'm like, "Where are your parents?" Yeah. They're like you're six. You're five. Where are your parents? No, what no, I want to see gone. happen. I want to see you get that truck. Yeah. From Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, that is like candy for kids that. Back ramp goes down. You collect all the kids and return them to the houses. That would be terrific. Yeah. Or tell them you can play baseball when you bring your mom down here. Right. You know, your dad down here. So, wow. so now, now I'm like babysitting all the neighborhoods. Then I'm thinking, right. well, these kids can only get away with what my kid would get away with. So right. if I see the one I'm acting up, I, hey, hey but knock then it off. How can and you, you even you discipline like, oh, kids? Right. Oh, well, I discipline. No, I mean, but how can you <laughs> how can you presume to be the parent of that kid? Because he's being raised a certain way or she's being raised a certain right. way. And you can't be the parent laying down the law for these kids. But those parents have made a mistake leaving their kids with you. That's, Especially with me. Well, yeah. it's the same <laughs> as I'll wander into a coffee shop. And I'll sit there and I'll be bogarting the Wi-Fi and doing some typing and stuff like that. And then at the next table, some woman's going to be like, hey, could you watch my stuff for a minute? Now, is it okay for me to watch your laptop, watch her phone, watch her kid, yeah. watch every piece of belonging that she brings into the cafe? I mean, I'm not the security guard for all your stuff. And then I can't get my work done because I'm staring at her stuff because I'm like, now I'm all worried and I get freaked out about stuff. And the temptation to look through her emails. No, but I don't want to be there watching every belonging of this woman's stuff. I mean, everything she brings in, why, why is it now on me to watch her stuff? The other thing I ran into had to be, uh, it was last fall. Okay. I was hanging out at a coffee shop here in Cambridge and I had my stuff there, had my laptop, had my iPhone. I had my recorder. I think I had my recorder with me. Uh, This was when I was surreptitiously taping the people next to me because I couldn't believe they didn't know what the Internet was. But that's another topic for another day. (laughs) So I have all my stuff, and I'm freaked out about the meter. And my car was parked at a meter out of view of the front door of the um, coffee shop. So I sent a tweet out to the populace and said to them, should I put my trust in humanity and leave my stuff here while I go fill the meter. And the responses I got were almost 50-50, but the ones that were most compelling were the ones saying, yes, trust your neighbors not to grab your stuff and go to the car. Hmm. And I did. I I think No, I didn't do it entirely. I definitely pocketed anything that would have been easy easy to abscond with. So any of my little devices, my mobile devices, I threw those in my pockets. but I left the laptop, left it open, left it going, left my jacket, left some other things there. And yeah, I sprinted down the block with the quarters in my hand, but I didn't just jump on someone else and say, dude, let me interrupt your day. Let me let me inconvenience you and turn you into the babysitter of my technology. Yeah. So, <laughs> you're t- well, no, seriously. And you were the one that was all freaked out about I was, this well, anyway. Well, but, it was with a kid thing. But, yeah, but I get you, though. Serious, same thing. You're at, the, you're at a restaurant right. or you're at a cafe or something. Somebody asks you to watch your stuff. You're kind of like, what the? Well, does yeah. it go back to tribes when everyone was the parent of a kid? Yeah. Or everyone had community property. And everyone, that stuff belonged to everyone, so they cared. Well, and these days, there's so much individuality. The, the, whole thing, the thing that bothers me with, with the, the incident with my, my neighbors and their kids is, you know, in my house, and, and even when we go to like family's house, it's it's it, there's a handoff. When you have a little kid, you say, "Hey, I'm going upstairs. Keep an eye on the kids." Well, okay, or, you had a point where you were at an event, and someone asked you to look at one of their belongings. Yes. And that person vanished. Yes. For a good period of time. But when that person came back, yeah, I decided to go to the restroom, and and I was. Uh, confronted with, where's my stuff? Like, it's right where you left your stuff. You're standing three feet so away this from person, your stuff. You assumed when that person <laughs> came back, you didn't have to hand that baton back to them. Well, I didn't think so. It's like, yeah, watch my, my bag while, you know, I go grab a drink is well, one thing, but, like, watch my bag for the rest of the night is a little bit... Right. And what are the rules? 
I mean, how do you there communicate? Here, take your stuff back. Take your kid back. I'm not watching them anymore. Exactly. You know what I would do if I were watching kids? I would take them and get them whiffles or buzz Small cuts. <laughs> yeah, just bring them all to the barbershop and shave their heads. And then you'd be like, oh, I was in charge of them. I had to take Jackson or whatever my other boy's name is to the <laughs> barber. And I figured, why not? Haircuts for everyone. And that will be the last time the anyone last asks you to watch the kids. I've always thought about giving asparagus to a baby if you're asked to babysit. So a little kid who wears a diaper. And then, and then your baby, and then well, your baby the, that baby to change, smells well, the next time. Well, the parents have to change that diaper. It's just like, what the heck happened to yeah. my kid, right? What have you done? Like, oh my, that's not a good lunch topic. No, or you get the... <laughs> no, but... You can get them that that gum that turns them out different colors. There you go. Or, or any, or you could paint them. What if you paint one of those uh, fan faces on them for the Buffalo Bills or Face something? Painters, paint yeah. a letter on them. Yeah. And put them in like the J E T S Jets Jets Jets. Thing. <laughs> you brought up the question of whether it's right to order dessert when you go out for lunch. Except and it's right I was or wrong. I just don't typically. No, but I was talking about how I like to order appetizers. We forewent that today, but. So you're saying you have room? No, I'm just saying you can get a petite portion of a, a dessert. They get a Kinsale mud pie, not bad. Creme brulee. I mean, creme brulee. Creme brulee is crazy. Good. Is the, uh, I mean, if that's, it is French. We're at an Sorry. Irish restaurant, but how could it be bad? Why wouldn't you order your favorite dessert when you get the opportunity? It was almost like my comment yesterday when uh, it was about eight o'clock at night, and I was like, the summer's not going to get any newer. It's it's fading. Let's go and get twist ice cream. And we went out. Yes. I mean, why not take advantage? So I'm getting the creme brulee. I am getting the uh, petite portion. Okay. Petite. Unless you want some. I mean, if you're going to bogart my lunch. Let me see the dessert menu now. So I have to check it out. All right. There's some good stuff. I wasn't really thinking of dessert, honestly, to be quite honest. I I might skip dessert. I'll let you get dessert. Well, should I get the regular size creme brulee and you could have half? All right. I'll try it. I'll try it. I'm not going to eat the whole thing. Yes. I'll try it. Of course you're not because it's mine. (laughs) All right.